Hey y'all, happy Friday. So let's dig back in and let's pull this apart. So the Lord says this righteousness, security, triumph over opposition. Again, that from the Amplified Version, it just really amplifies it in that no weapon formed will prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you, you shall show to be in the wrong. It says every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. Um, this righteousness is of me, says the Lord. This is the righteousness that I impart to them. And so, again, not by anything that we have done, but because he has given it to us. So, um, it is the heritage, it says, of the servants of the Lord. So, let's define heritage. It is property, something that descends to an heir, something transmitted by or acquired from a predecessor, a legacy or an inheritance. And so, um, <laughs> it's part of the inheritance package. It's part of what we receive when we receive Jesus, when we submit our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so, um, just like this, the prodigal son, part of his heritage was, part of his inheritance was being a son. Regardless of what he looked like, he was a son. Came home, the father made him recognizable. And so for us, this peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition, that though the accuser, Satan, again, going back to that passage from Zechariah 3, it said that Satan stood at his right hand, stood at Joshua's right hand um, to be his adversary and to accuse him. And um, regardless of what Satan says, when you are a son, part of your rights and inheritance as a son or daughter um, is this righteousness. He says, it is of me, says the Lord. This, and let's go to the King James Version there. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. It's not of us. It's of him, because we belong to his household. And I think that's one important thing. Um, and I we mentioned this earlier that we, um, Ephesians 6. So let's go back there. We'll close out the week in our chapter on the armor of God. But when Paul talks about um, the armor in Ephesians um, chapter 6, and so he says in 614, stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, right? And what I want you to do, what I've started doing, is after each, um, well, after each piece of armor, and before the next piece of armor, repeat that phrase. So, stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and being in right standing with God. It is of him, and he tells us to stand in it. He doesn't tell us to wrestle with it not to wrestle with the righteousness, not to wrestle with the truth. He doesn't tell us to earn it, to earn, stand, therefore, having earned the right, the blessed plate of righteousness. No, he tells us to stand, therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. Stand, therefore, hold your ground, 
having put on the breastplate of righteousness, moral rectitude, and right standing with God. So we stand wearing what he has provided for us. We stand equipped with the weaponry that he has given us. It's not that we found it. It's not that we earned it. It's not that we wrestled with it. It's not that we, um, anything other than it was given to us because of whose we are and the household that we belong to. So I encourage you today, stand, hold your ground, wearing the breastplate of righteousness, being in right standing with God, because he has given it to you. He's made it available to, to you. The only thing that we had to do to get that breastplate of righteousness is come back home. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow morning for our live about nine o'clock. Bye.